Hey, welcome, welcome, man. Thank you, everybody, for joining to Star Flag Media. Today's a special day. Um, the reason why it's special, do you care? To, do you know why today's a special day? I can't wait to hear it. Well, we normally film on Fridays, Friday evenings, but today is a Saturday. It is. And not only is today Saturday, but today is the first time the sun has been out since I came back from vacation. And it's it's during the day that we're filming, not in the evening. It's also during the day. Hence so, why we got the sunglasses on. So, hey. Our future's so bright, we got to wear shades. That is correct. <laughs> that is correct, man. I couldn't have said it any better. So, um, yeah, man. So, so thank you guys. And uh, what's going on with the news, man? A what, lot. what did I miss? No, you didn't miss anything. We, you're back. <laughs> <laughs> You've been back a week. <laughs> um, we're going to start off with, with some sad news this week, man. Mm. And um, it was, you know, you you actually were the one that broke the news in the group chat. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was on uh, I was on Reddit and I was scrolling and I seen uh, Carl Weathers passed away. How sad is that? Yeah, man. That's seventy six you know, years old. Apollo Creed looked still looked great for his age, Rest man. I mean, the dude's seventy six years Creed. old, and it was still you know in great shape. Yeah, he was on The Mandalorian, and he was he 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 looked know, apart. Yeah. He looked good. He was doing a good job. R.I.P. Uh, Apollo Creed. He was in Predator with Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Um, Sandler, uh, Happy Gilmore. Yeah, and then, Happy, oh, um, Happy Gilmore. Yep, yep, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. So I mean, it's it's sad news. Carl Weathers, you know, uh, Friday he died Friday yesterday, seventy six years old. Um, so a lot of stars that's went. A good, um, that's a good life though. Seventy six years is a nice. Seventy six years old, not just not just a, a decent amount of time on the planet, but he left his mark. Yeah, where most of us kind of just kind of you know go away and we'll always be remembered by our our loved ones. Yeah. Um, they say that you're forgotten in two generations. So, for example, you might remember your great grandfather, mm-hmm. but you don't know who his dad was. Yeah. So, so it only takes a couple generations for you to kind of be just be a name on your family tree. Yeah. Uh, where a man like you know Carl Weathers is going to be remembered for as long as we have media. I yeah. mean, people, you could watch film and you go back to. The you way say, we go back to great, the, this is your great grandfather, yeah, or just people do, who don't even you know need to be related to you, yeah. Like when we go back and we watch you know Buster Keaton or Charlie Chaplin from the nineteen twenties and thirties, we know their names, yeah, because they're immortalized on film. Yeah, I almost said who the hell is Charlie Chaplin, but then I immediately put the black and white face and you know the mustache and the, the hat mustache, and the, yeah, he's you know yeah, comedy legend. Yeah, he's yeah that's him. But yeah, man. Here we so, are. That's a hundred years later, man. Yeah, and we're talking about him. Yeah. So um, I don't know the first guy you. you same same generation as, but as Chaplin. Ch- Chaplin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Buster Keaton was. If you ever get a chance, we'll probably put a little uh, video down here of Buster Keaton real quick. Uh, he was really famous for doing like stunt work. Okay. Um, so he was one of the first guys on silent film who who would stand in the middle of let's say a falling. Uh, Building. Yeah, a falling like whole wall, like a okay. real wall, and he would stand perfectly still and the window would would be what he goes through okay and you know real life like if he had moved six inches this way he's yeah. dead uh so buster keaton was kind of that guy and um so his was like basically action films of the 20s and 30s man okay uh he no, pione- pioneers pioneers that's dope so carl weathers one of those guys man i mean he broke out and he's he did many films but he broke out in rocky as apollo creed yeah, rest in peace apollo creed God, man, it, there is it, Sylvester Stallone took to X, and he was saying he's literally, you know, holding back tears because he's in front of this big painting of of them two, yeah. you know, together, and he says like he understands that without Apollo, there would be no Rocky. Yeah, it, it, you know, he said the first time he saw him in casting, um, he knew immediately. Exactly. He was like, this dude has something different, and you know, they wanted somebody who can kind of be like Muhammad Ali, you know, yeah. and give that that pizzazz that yeah. that charisma and god man he did it he did it i, uh, I think a Lil wayne lyrics uh when he says he had a freestyle on like some beyonce beat mm-hmm. and he said um rest in peace apollo creed i'm a champion where the hell's my rocky thing so 
So you know the, the man. The man was the pop culture. Yeah, he's loved everywhere. He was in rap. He was in music. You you name it. I mean, and hell, the Creed movies are still going strong today. It's you know no longer called yeah. Rocky. It's called yeah, Creed. It's called Creed. Yeah. So I mean, shout out to and you know rest in peace to Carl Weathers, seventy six years old. Thank you for all the entertainment. You know, of course, uh, sad time for his family and friends and. Uh, you know, he'll always be loved and immortalized, you know. That's one of those few guys who didn't have one of those Me Too movements. and um, Oh, yeah, he avoided that. He avoided all that and uh, was a positive uh, male figure in Hollywood. When at times, you know, there was not many of them around. So, shout out to him and, uh, you know, sad Black sad excellence, news. black excellence. Yeah, and he died during Black History Month. So, if you're going to go out... Um, do it during the, you know, let's make like make history twice. Uh, there's no easy way to transition from that, but uh, we're gonna go on to uh, gaming news this week. Okay. And uh, Suicide Squad killed the Justice League is out. Oh yeah, man. We wanted we wanted to have hope for it last week. Mixed reviews. I I had a feeling. It was I had a feeling. Um, yeah. <laughs> last week they were they was they were being so proactive about what good that the game is they were doing pushing and, for it and, please um, somebody say something good they released the embargo on it early yeah but then when they let people play it early they didn't turn on the servers and which is i understand it's understandable yeah um you're gonna let people play your game early which is like an online game um you know online co-op that mm-hmm. has single player. Yeah. So it's like, bro, like, all right, I'm not going to turn the servers on because when I got to pay f- to cut those servers on early. Yeah. And you don't know how that's going to go. But, yeah, the reviews is mixed. Well, not mixed. At best. The, the reviews is mostly po- mostly negative. And um, IGN I'm gave it a, a 5 out of 10. Not shot. Which is mediocre. Yeah, I'm not shot. It's literally a, a D. Yeah. A, a pay, D. pay to win. It didn't fail. Not but even pay to win, but it's... it's just a, not... Great. So they, they, the review, we're just going to, I'm not going to read the whole review. These online service long. games, man. We don't like that. It's, it's, you got to move on. Yeah. It's a time where, you know, they, it might be a money generator in the long run for them. Who knows? They might turn around and fix it. There have been very few cases where we have gotten fixes later on and games turned out to be better down the road, like yeah. No Man's Sky, things like that. But I don't know about this one because, you know, DC is an expensive license to hold. Yep. So for them to continue to add content to it, I'm assuming there's going to be some kind of a price tag associated with that. Um, but yeah, Kill Suicide, uh, excuse me, Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League review, uh, five out of ten in IGN. By no means IGN is you know the end all be all, but this is kind of across yeah. the board what everybody agrees. They're like the Coca Cola. Sure, game yeah, game. yeah. You might prefer Pepsi or RC Cola, but. Yeah. IGN is not the worst source in this case. Uh, it's pretty much agreed that it's a 5 out of 10. So it's mediocre. Uh, Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League is a repetitive and bland looter slash shooter that despite an engaging story never stays fun for long enough. That's that synopsis of a very long review. They went real deep, you know, gave it a real in-depth review. But uh, yeah, Suicide Squad, not great. Um, and it's probably the biggest game that was supposed to come out this month. And you got to pay for it, right? No, it's free to play. Oh, it's a free to play game. Yeah, it's free to play. Um, so I, uh, maybe it's not that bad if it's free to play. I've played free to play games that hooked me. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, like okay. Asphalt Urban Legends or whatever it is. Like I played the crap out of that. I've probably got like four hundred hours into that arcade racer. And otherwise, if I would have to pay sixty bucks for that game, I wouldn't have. Yeah. But as a free-to-play game, this game is actually something that I played a lot. Okay. A lot. So, I don't know. I mean, I like DC Universe. I yeah. played that. I created a character, and then my son created a character. I didn't really play it. You know what free-to-play game that I am interested in? What's that? Foam Stars. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Foam Stars. And that's interesting that you say that. That's interesting. I, did, I wouldn't have expected it. I like, I, I like Splatoon. We're going to get into that. So that's the next thing we're going to talk about, actually. And it's a good transition because Sony had their tell me. Just, Sony yeah, had their, right? their, play, their state of play. Yep. And uh, in January of 24, at the very end, we're going to talk about everything that was announced okay. uh, on Sony's state of play. Okay. So the first game that they 
that they started with, it was what is it, a Divers Blade or something? Yeah, Hell's Blade or something. Divers. We'll, we'll talk about them the way IGN okay. has them listed here, and then you can give kind of what you think. Okay. The first one they showed was Death Stranding Two. Oh yeah, that was. Uh, I never. I haven't played the first one, but it's a Kojima game, so I'm internet went crazy. Norman Reedus is back as you know the guy from Walking Dead. He's playing. Yep. He's playing his role again. As we know, that was originally uh, supposed to be like PT, the Silent Hill game that Kojima was working on uh, with Konami. And then he left Konami and he took Norman Reedus with him. Yep. And they did Death Stranding, which got great reviews. And now we have part two. Uh, Death Stranding 2 is supposed to come out later this year. Um, I don't have an exact release date on the page, but we should expect that. Let's see if they talk about it. Yeah, there's no exact release date yet, but it should be for this year. Uh, the next one is uh, Team Ninja's Rise of the Ronin. Uh, Team Ninja, famous for doing yeah. Ninja Gaiden games. I don't think I've seen the trailer. All right, but we'll, we'll put like a, everything down yeah, here. Yeah, that's minute, they. You know, Team Ninja is a good team. Yeah, they make good games. So the one thing that we could probably count on is that this game is going to be hard as hell. Yep. <laughs> it's a Team Ninja game. Action packed and yeah. Yeah. And bloody and, and, and wild. So it's a one-on-one sword combat with a parry system. And, of course, it's a Team Ninja game. Uh, other game they showed off was called Until Dawn Remastered. Uh, I never played the original. So we get a look at the remaster. That's like one graphics. of the horror games. Yeah, I'm all set. All right. Yeah, I'm not a huge I'm fan of horror games. I'm not about to pay you to scare me, bro. I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Comes out uh, for later in 2024 for PS5 and PC. Okay. Uh, other game they showed off was called Stellar Blade. Oh my God, that looked that looked amazing. They were showing the end game with the titular character, like with different outfits. Yeah, Eve. And um, I could see the whole cosplay scene going crazy for all those gamers who like to go to conventions. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the, the graphics look amazing um, from what I see. Uh, you know, maybe or most probably what we what we were seeing was the, like on a gaming PC. post-apocalyptic but world it, it, looks really cool. It looked good. Would I buy it? Maybe not, but. What I seen look good. It and, good. And maybe maybe when when it's discounted or if it comes out at a discounted price. Yeah, it looks really fun. Um, you know, we we don't have too much time to to game on every single game anymore. You have to yeah, we have to we, choose wisely. We got real we life. Spend and, our and spend we got our Call of time. Duty for me, so it's like <laughs> I play a lot of Switch games. So so this game is is it looked really interesting, and even though I've got a PS Five, am I going to drop you know seventy dollars on it? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's it looks really cool, though. Stellar Blade. It looked good. Check it out if you guys are into that. Uh, next one was Capcom's Dragon Dogma 2. Um, it's coming out on March 22nd. I didn't see that. And I believe that that's coming out on multiple platforms. Okay. Um, and then uh, a big rumored game finally got shown off, and it was the Sonic Generations remake. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, now yeah. they added Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little upset about that. Go on. Um, the reason why I'm upset is I just bought Sonic Generations for my son. Maybe not even a month ago. And um, now they're... Re- well, that's like a PS3 game. Yes, but they... I believe it was, like, updated. Yeah, but this is the first time they remaster it. So and they, You got the PS3 game. Okay, but... But Still, but you bought the game I just, just now, I just and now it. here comes the the shadow now version. Now with shadow, and I and and I know if my son sees, he's gonna be like, oh my god, they got shadow. Yeah, they got shadow. Look, that daddy, look, and then I want to hear that. And <laughs> he played the first level and he put it down. Oh, so yeah, so yeah. So now I gotta beat. Do I have to beat this game? It's supposedly a really good version or of a three D Sonic game. So do I just? Buy it a second time with Shadow. Yeah, and put the time into that. Oh my God. So here's the thing. I'm not I'm not super me, I'm not super thrilled Shadows in this. At this point, why don't you just remake or remaster the Shadow the Hedgehog game for the GameCube that No, that was horrible too. Remake it, remaster it, make it right, do it right. Because that had all the pieces to a good game and they just screwed it up. So he, here I'm looking at the Shadow the Hedgehog stages, and boy do they remind me of that. 
And um, are they going to pull a Sega and ruin Sonic Generations by adding Shadow, Shadow the Hedgehog uh, when they didn't have to? And they had the old school Sonic, so there's no old school Shadow. Yeah, so to... that was another thing. Why is Shadow in the 16-bit era Sonic's world? Yeah, like, I don't, like, yo, no. Sega is known for anytime you have a great version of their game, they say, let's add another friend and ruin it. And uh, it's always it's always when they add an extra friend that the game kind of tanks. Yeah. But... That's Sega, and that game is expected in autumn of 2004, and that's coming to everything. PS4, PS5, Series X and S, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. Uh, They showed off Silent Hill, The Short Message. Uh, It's a free-to-play Silent Hill spinoff, and it is available right now to play. That was a shadow drop. Yeah, don't shadow nothing. You're not scaring me, bro. (laughs) I'm sorry. So you're not about to pay. I'm not paying you to scare me. <laughs> you can go pick up. You can go pick up Konami Silent Hill. Uh, it's supposedly like a short game, I guess, but um, it's out now. You can go get it. Uh, next game they should also called Judas. Um, it looks colorful, dystopian game. Uh, not much other than first person combat shown. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not looking forward. To this game in particular, I don't care. I don't know about the franchise, and if anybody out there, you know, this guy, this is made from the guy that made Bioshock. So Bioshock is oh, huge. Okay. So it could be, it could be great. So it could be fantastic. I don't know. Um, Bioshock was great, but didn't they just make a Bioshock remake that yeah, wasn't good? They did like a um, well, there was like a new Bioshock game that wasn't great, but they did also remaster the first three, I think, and those are really good. Yeah, so like, but most recently it was... It was like a decent game, but not like top 10 or whatever. The people yeah. that made a spiritual successor, and it wasn't... It was okay. Yeah, this is actually the guy, though. This is Ken Levine doing okay. it. Okay. So, so it might be good. Uh, it, yeah, it's it it's one great. of those, it yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll find out. Um, other games showed off called V Rising, an isometric action game. It looks a little bit like Diablo. Uh, showed off the full trailer. Um, it's a fantasy survival game, and it looks like it came out on PC in 2022. Okay, so a whole game coming to consoles. Yeah, and now it's coming to PS5 in 2024. Uh, a Switch game is finally coming out onto the PlayStation. Oh, Dave, Dave the Diver. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> really? They had a Godzilla to it. Yeah, it was an indie game. Uh, one of those games that you sleep on, and then all of a sudden it's like a mega hit. Dave the Diver from the independent circuit for the Switch was like a mega blockbuster. Yeah. So it's coming to PlayStation and they announced Godzilla's coming. Yep. So I'm not going to buy this game. It's not Why for not? me. Because it's not for me. I mean, it's not for me either, but like... So Dave the Diver was... But that's a... good for them. It's good for the for those uh, people that it, made the game. It was a surprise hit. And it was a surprise hit and it's... Reaching another platform, so kudos to you guys. Yeah, you guys and found a niche. It's gonna sell again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found a niche and it's it's doing well. So great. Yeah, so uh, it's coming uh, May of twenty twenty four, right around the corner, a couple months. Yeah, like as a gamer, we want to appreciate and celebrate uh, creativity. And... I like it when an indie game breaks out. Yeah, No Man's Sky is one of those games yeah, that we took... want to we want to celebrate that. It it was one of those small games that. It was. A, it promised a big world, and well, it came out, and it, a lot. yeah, and it wasn't that. But they end up delivering. And so. now it is that. Yeah. Now it's that and more. Yeah. Um. And but this was like a five to ten person team. Yeah. It was a, you know it was like if you and me got together and learned coding and we decided to make a game. It was like me and you got together and said, hey, let's make a YouTube channel. Yeah, and hopefully in a year, you know, we'll be we'll we'll be there. Shout out to you guys. Make us Dave the Diver. <laughs> Next game they showed off was Zenless Zone. Uh, it's a Hoyo verse. It's Hoyo versus newest game, and today we learned it's in development for PS5. So not much there. Okay. Uh, surprise game was uh, Metro Awakening for the PSVR two. I think I've seen that one. So Metro, the Metro games I are see, like I think I think I've seen two PS 
VR games. Yeah, this is one of them look really them. good. One of them look uh, okay. So this is like the shooter game in the sub okay. in the in the Metro system of subways. Uh, the first Metro, the first two Metro games are really good games. I think the first one is a PS4 game, and the second one came out for the, this generation. I'm not 100 percent sure if they both came out for PS4, but they're they're highly rated, very good shooters. Okay. And now there's a VR version of that coming out. Okay. Um, that's set to come out in in this year, of course. I think um, that game looked good. From it was one of the two. It looks really good. Okay. Yeah, and it's set before the first Metro of 20, 2033, and it put players in the shoes of a doctor searching the Metro tunnels to find his wife. In VR, it might be really good. Yeah. Um, it's certainly a first-person shooter, so why not? It, yeah. From, the yeah. next one was Iffy. It's called Legendary Tales for the PlayStation that VR 2. Was the, okay, that was the Iffy one. Okay. Yeah, it's a first-person game that includes combat with magic, swords, hammers, bows, and arrows. More of a fantasy environment. And it looked like a VR game. Yeah. and you can One see of them looked like a VR game. The other one didn't. It looked like a PS3 Elder <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah, that one, I, I ain't really cared. I was like, ah, okay. And so out of the two, Metro is kind of like a given. But out of the two, the one that, that I saw people online clamoring about was this one. Wow. Um, and that really surprised me. But then some people gave like really good like arguments as to... If you go back and you watch the trailer, the environment is very interactive, and supposedly the physics is like out of this world. Like it, it looks like very realistic as far as if you're playing the game in the VR environment, you might actually feel like you're in there. Okay. I don't know. So maybe it, I need to pre-order trailer, my Disney Hollow Mat. Yeah, maybe you need to get the <laughs> Disney Hollow Mat and and pay another six hundred bucks to get your PSVR too. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Why? I'm not doing. I mean, you love Sony, but you don't love them that much. No, I, I it's not that I love Sony. It's Would you just, get the PSVR 2 for the price point that's at? No. no it's nothing on there that I want. It, it's, it, there's no games that would have me say, I, I got to get this. Yeah, I got to pay 500 bucks for this. 600 bucks. Plus the game. Yeah. It's, 660. It's, 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 yeah, it's 70, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> like, there's, there's nothing on in that that, yeah. that that does it for me. No, I agree. I agree. Um, I like the idea of having a VR system. If they can bring out a game that will speak to me, and I go, man, you can, the only game that I saw on PlayStation VR that I that I really wanted to play was Gran Turismo. That seems perfect for a VR experience where okay. you're in you're you're in the, you're car. In the car. That's got to be really cool. Yeah, that's got to be really cool. But then you need so. I know. Man, it's too it's much. Too much. You, <laughs> it's, it's too much. much. You need the steering wheel. You need the gear. It's box. too much. It's too much. That. You need all that. But like, man, pedals. would it be cool if you just had money to blow on that? Yeah, like my, it's got to be a cool. Experience. My first ever Gran Turismo experience was my cousin. Uh, he he spent the night at my house. We were kids, and he brought his PlayStation, and he brought the steering wheel, PS1? and he brought the brake pedals, and we played Gran Turismo, <laughs> and um, that at that was, time. Gran Turismo's graphics, I know you might, if you're a younger gamer, you look back and you don't believe it, but those graphics are really good in that era. Yeah. Um, Just like they are now. If you play Gran Turismo now, still, you're mind it's blown, still, it's the same experience. It's, it's still top of the cream of the crop. It's fantastic. Um, yeah. So that was my first experience with Gran Turismo. It felt too real. And I'm, I'm an arcade racer yeah because you got to break you got to earn your licenses yeah, you don't like it sim was, games it's no nah, i don't but i think in a vr headset it might be a different no i think that'd be great but just getting the, the vr if headset, they had an arcade mode in gran turismo like a forza motorsport yeah make it a little bit more forza e like they do a gt arcade that would be amazing where they kind of just relax a little bit on Give you a little bit more. more I mean, of an may, arcade maybe, field. maybe, but it's. And then we're gonna go to your your uh, pick of the show, Foam Stars. So Foam Stars. Oh, so Foam Stars. All right. So boom. So like, all right. Yeah, Square Enix game. So Square Enix, you know, they uh, their most recent miss was um, for Spoken. Yeah. But they, you know, they made. They make good games. They make Final oh, Fantasy. Oh, yeah. No, it, so, and, and Dragon's Quest. And, yeah. So they, they made a game, and uh, it looked like it's a Splatoon. Tomb Raider. 
It looked like it's a Splatoon type. Clone. It does look like Splatoon. The first time I saw this last year, I looked, said, oh, it, so Square is making a Splatoon game. Yeah, so... I like Splatoon. I like Splatoon. I like Splatoon, I like Splatoon too. Like, yeah, that was drunk, Nintendo's... So I can't talk. That was Nintendo's take on a shooter, and they did it their way, and it they works. Did, yeah, and, and it, it works. was it, it's fun, and... Um, it's going to be launch free if you have PS online. So I'm going to try it out next week. I'm going. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm gonna, you. I'm going to try it out, and um, hopefully I like it. If I don't like it, whatever. But it's, I think it's it going to be. A, no it money. looks like a very fun clone of Splatoon. Excuse me, guys. And then uh, Hell Divers Two was shown off. That's. What? I. That's the one he wants to look at. That's the one that nobody likes. But I was gonna it say looks that. Cool to I me. was gonna say that. So Hell Divers <laughs> Two is probably the bell of the ball of the state of play, and most people online are saying, "Eh, I don't really care for it." Yeah. But it looks. Can I just? Off. Okay, go on. Yeah, what are your thoughts on Hell Divers Two? What do you want to talk about? It looks. Like a fake. What is it? What what Bungie got 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 going on? Oh, uh, uh yeah, yeah, that uh, on on PlayStation. Oh, no, Bungie. What's Bungie? What's, yeah. Oh, Bungie. Yeah, Bungie. No. What is what what game Bungie got? Bungie got. Uh, Man, we're drunk. I, we it's not Halo. Guys. After Halo. Uh, Destiny. It looked like a fake Destiny, and. But it just looked, it looked cool to me, bro. I, I don't know. I don't know. It Did just, you play the first one? The first, de- I played both Destinies. And no, no, Hell Divers. No, I have it. I have it. But maybe, I just, maybe, maybe look into that. You, you right. So like, the smart thing to do is play the first Hell Divers and and see if you want more. And see, yeah. But I'm seeing the trailers and I'm like, huh, that looks. Pretty fun to me. The it's first Helldivers came out when in an air in in a in a very busy time when there was a lot of AAA titles and it was really hard for it to stand out. Yep. So maybe that's why you missed it the first time around. But a couple of years later, now you can probably go back and buy this game. You can go to GameStop and you could probably find it for twenty or thirty bucks. Okay. Maybe this is something you should look into if you're really into the Helldivers too. What's the reviews on the first one? Do you know? It's a decent game, yeah. I think it's got like a seven and a half to a eight and a half, depending on. Let's let's look at what Metacritic says right now. Let's find out. Hell Divers. Metacritic. It looks so, fun. It looked like it's stupid fun. It looked like it's what Suicide Squad yeah, should have been. It's got a eight point oh, uh, generally favorable review for a PlayStation Five. So it's, it's it's actually excuse me a PS Four game. So you missed... You yeah, know, they got the... Last the, gen, but... The customization would look like it was there. Like, I don't... I, 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 I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna, I, if, if there was a sci-fi game that I would want to play and try... Yeah. It, it would be that. Um, Have you seen Hell Let Loose? No. Holy crap. It's a World War II shooter, and it's dominating my algorithm right now on TikTok. Okay. On PC and now it's coming to Xbox. Chris. Chris. It's a realistic World War II shooter. It's not like Call of Duty. They'll be like they'll be It's not like Battlefield either? No. This is like you'll be down with your boys down the field. It's almost like a simulation. And it's an empty field and you're just Okay, we got to get from point A to point B. And you could play 20 minutes of quiet. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, mortar shells come in. And you'll just be talking to your boy online. And it'd be like, hey, man, so how's things going? You know, da 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 da. And all of a sudden, boom, your boy is smithereens because he stepped on a landmine. Okay. And holy crap. Guys. I hell let loose. It's coming to Game Pass later this year, I believe. But 
it's also you're going to be able to purchase this game. It's available on PC right now. Um, it's not like Warzone to me. It's better. Because it, Warzone is still more arcade -y. We were talking about arcade versus... This... Every clip I've seen online is not it's not the battling that that gets me so much as the experience of being in a squad with teams and you just don't know when the next attack is coming because that's what World War 2 is like. Yeah. And it feels when when it when when stuff when shit hits the fan it hits the fan. Okay. And it's insanity. And I can only. And this is where you you can kind of appreciate and get a feel for the veterans of those days when they came back and they were different. This is the closest you'll ever get to that without being in actual okay. war. Um, man, it's. I'll show you some clips after after we get off the air here. Okay. But holy crap, hell let loose. And so if you're looking for something like you know, you like hell divers or whatever, that's still more of an arcade shooter. Yeah. This is this is not anything like that, but it just reminded me of. I had to tell you about it. Um, we're gonna be kind of wrapping up a little bit earlier this this week, but we want to talk about a rumor that came out this week. Oh yeah, what's that? Thursday at nine forty four a.m. We had you got the time. Yes, yeah, sir. On NeoGaf. So usually these gaming leaks come either from 4chan first or NeoGaf. Okay. Those are like the two biggest ones that that I've noticed where you can you can flip the coin and say this is fake or this is real. But when you start looking a little deeper into these, uh, maybe a week or so later, you start seeing whether or not there's some validity to these rumors. Yeah. So we've got a, a PlayStation handheld, and they put in quotes and quotations and parentheses, the Vita Two. Yeah. So we might be getting a second Vita. After all this time. So before we kind of give our opinions on it, this is what the rumor says. It's a custom AMD processor. Yeah, like a 1.8 chip or something. Now we know for sure Sony contracted recently AMD. Yep. So check mark on that, right? Yep. Currently in the high level design phase at least two years away from now. Technically is not greenlit for launch yet. Developers that have been spoken to state that it is plausible that it's called the Vita 2 or a new, you know, PS Portable. It could utilize what they call 18 CUs to maintain native with all PS4 digital titles and for PS5 games, a pro-like patch could be applied after a bit of work and testing from participating developers. And it says, because the PS5's variable clock speed, it's also plausible that the GPU could return at a 1.8 gigahertz or slower, too. So to be clear, this wouldn't be for all games. It would require per-game testing and patches and games that would run at a much lower resolution. And that's fine if you're looking at a much smaller screen. Yep. All right. So let's say a PS5 game that's 4K, which we don't have any of. Even though the box says 4K, um, <laughs> it would be okay at 1080p or 720 on a, on a seven-inch or an eight-inch screen. Um, and it goes on. It says it has alternatively been suggested to me that the Vita 2 is in fact a PlayStation 6 family handheld meant to launch many years from now, so at least two years, with the next generation PlayStation 6 as a weaker but portable alternative for the Japanese market. To be clear, what I can 100% confirm is that it is a new handheld in early development and that AMD has already gotten the contract for the PlayStation 6. The exact specs and details of the PS6 and Vita 2 are just speculation at this point. Yeah. Your thoughts on this, especially after the PS Portal just launched... <clears throat> for the ps5 all right so ps portal um why i would get one i would get one because having a nice iphone that you have with a higher resolution screen than the ps yeah. portal and you could do the ps remote now why would you get a ps portal i, I would so the all right so the reason why i wouldn't get one no no, no i, I want to so, know having a yeah okay why wouldn't you yeah so yeah, that's fine 
my son is is always on my PlayStation, right? Fair. So Fair. if I had my own version of my own PlayStation that I could just play portably, yeah, um, it would work. So if the PS portable, if I was able to play games while my son played games on my PlayStation, then then yeah, um, it, it would apply to me. But we all know that the the PlayStation Portable is portable. It was the portal. It was marketed for Japan because in Japan they got Wi-Fi one, everywhere, even on the freaking trains. Yeah, Wi-Fi is everywhere, and, even on the trains. And typically, um, in okay, Japan, we, we, well, in the Japanese gotta, household, we gotta, we gotta go to Japan, man. In the Japanese household, there's like one TV per household. You know, yeah. so it, it would make sense there. So now. If they were to drop a new Vita, right? Now, what I would want, what I would want is probably something that I'm not gonna get. So this this new Vita thing is probably not for me. But right. what I would want from a PlayStation Portable is PS Vita Two. So if if I'm able to play my PS Five games independent. From who's already currently playing my PS5. Hmm. Alright. So that checks that that it, it so checks let's the box. Say, let's say your kid is on Spider Man 2. He's on Roblox now. He learned Roblox. He's on Roblox or Minecraft. Wait till he gets into Minecraft. Holy crap. Because every kid loves Legos. Yeah. Wait till he finds Minecraft. Yeah. Um <laughs> Don't show him Minecraft unless you're ready. Uh but yeah, let's say your kid's playing Roblox. And you want to fire up your PlayStation Portable or your Vita 2, and you want to play... Call Hel- of Duty. Yeah, or Hell Divers 2. Yeah. If it allows you to do both... If it allows me to do both, then, well, the, we, yeah, we it's, know a good, for, it's a good chance that I, I would potentially buy. Well, we know for sure P- PlayStation 5 is not capable of doing that. Yeah, that's why they said it's a PlayStation 6. There, that, that was in quotes, PS6 family... But compatible with P- with every PS4 digital title, mm-hmm. and that means potentially PS5. But they said that. Um, so if the PS6 allows for that, like the developers would have to create a patch they, to make it they work. They would have to make it work. So now you. So here's why I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it because. You're gonna have these uh, developers do more work to be able to sell the game to a, a new audience right. essentially because even though it's PSV at a two but it's 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 a new handheld. So it's it's a new market. That's technically true. Sony's been in the handheld market since the PSP, which we're talking about two thousand what, five or six or something yeah, like that. Yeah, but then in the PETA they stopped working or supplying So the Vita was the first one where they just kinda quit on the system after a couple years. And what year was that? Um, that was in the last 10 years. So they've been 10 years removed out. from... I'll tell you exactly when it... Well, well, well then you can argue, if you want to be devil's advocate, right? You can argue, argue that the portal is their latest handheld. I want to consider... I don't, I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. I don't either. I'm with you on that. But you can argue that. Yeah. You, if you want to play devil's advocate. But, um... So neither one of us want to play devil's advocate. But, like... They've been, let's say they've been 10 years removed from a portable system and. Came out in 2012, which was over 10 years ago. Okay. So now you got the Switch that's doing well. You got the Steam Deck. You got Lenovo making their own system, uh, portable system. So now I could kind of see why they would want to jump back in the market. Yeah. So the last PS Vita game came out in 2019 from what Wikipedia says. That may or may not be true. Um, so that's five years. Yeah. And then the portal, again, some people are arguing that it is a PlayStation handheld. I argue that it's not. I argue that it's a streaming it's, device. I, it's it's, it's tag just a, along. For me, it's a PlayStation 5 accessory. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a tag along. Yeah, it's for me, it's like, yo, you can't, it's not a portable because can I play games on this outside of owning a PlayStation 5? Yep. You can't. Yeah, you can't. You can't. So to me, it's like, to me, it's like I'm carrying my cell phone and the controller. 
But what I always wanted from the PlayStation Portable, which what I portal thought... Portal or portable? The portal, what I thought that they were going to do yeah. was they were going to make it again. Hey, you guys over the, over the last month have watched me down this entire bottle. So I'm about to finish it off. I thought they were going to make it again and then add an update oh, no. to be able to... I wish. ...play and download games... I wish. ...natively. I wish. So... I kind of feel like this is what this may be with the the Vita two. Ooh, maybe not. With the with the Vita two. <laughs> maybe not. So the Vita two, I, I I think like yo, if it if it allows me to play games independent of my PlayStation, all right, you you got me on the line. So now I'm gonna shit on it. Okay. What format is Sony going to be using? Are they going to be using cards like they did on the Vita? Is the card going to be more than 100 gigabytes for a video game? Are they going to include a one... Let's just, let's just say it. A one or a two terabyte internal memories? Because PS4 games are 100 gigabytes a piece. A pop. Period. Excluding uh, Warzone and Call of Duty. Which probably are more. It's like 200, 250. Yeah, so we're going to... Let's say... Let's say they use optimization. Let's say they downgrade some resolutions here yeah. and there. Either way... And it's, they let's say they bring Call of Duty down to 100 gigs. Yeah. Let's it's, say it's, that. So, so... Wait, let me finish my thought. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's say they do that. What kind of a card, each card, let's say they use Nintendo Switch-like cards and the Vita. Are they going to be 100 gigabytes? If so, how much are each game going to cost? It's not going to be cheap. I'll tell you what, it's not going to be. It's not going to be 60 or $70. So if the internal memory, that means that this system has to have at least one terabyte of internal memory at least and that's still way too little so if you have one terabyte of internal memory you can maybe carry at full optimization 1080p resolution with low bitrate audio 10 games um We're, so this is two years out and that's we're talking about so, PS4. So the, the the price of memory cards have gone down. Yeah. I think But they're the, not gonna use flash memory. I, I, Sony always uses proprietary crap. Yeah, but so let me let me explain. I think <laughs> if this were to work worldwide Oof, that's a lot of fucking whiskey. If this were to go worldwide, I think it's in Sony's best interest to take Every whatever scan disk, uh, memory card. Yeah, and make give it, it give expandable it, memory. Give it, maybe? give it five hundred gigabytes off the rip. You said a terabyte. I think, but at least I think, a, I think Sony, five will keep the prices down. You're you're right. I mean, I agree, um, but I don't see it. I don't if you see could put it. in, if you could put in any memory card. Like, I don't know the prices on memory cards well, now. Let a two terabyte card is like, if you want to get a decent one, it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah. So like, that's not, that's not, that's not too expensive. That's terrible. And then two years from now, who's to say that the price won't go down? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's so two years from now. Make which, it online only. You, you download your games online. Which means it'll be more, man. So, but like, I, I, I hear you, but to make it work. Sony can't do proprietary cards. They always do. But that's what they always did. They could right. always make a change, though. Maybe. But Maybe. Sony is notorious for this, guys. But, I, I apologize. But listen, Sony, if there's one thing that they are very similar to Nintendo, is that they use their own stuff. <coughs> if you used to buy a Sony digital camera, you, you couldn't buy a, a, a flash SD card. You had to buy a Sony memory stick. And that's still the case. If you, today, 
if you go out and you buy a PlayStation Vita, you had to buy, you couldn't even use the memory stick you bought for your digital camera. You had to buy like a, a PS Vita memory card. So, what's your, your question for me? Um, no, there's no question. There's no questions per, I think, per se. All right, so, uh, like, so, I like the idea of a, of a new PlayStation. I like the idea of a, of a new PlayStation yeah. Vita, too. I like, the, I like the idea of it, too. But I think for this to possibly work and, and possibly get money, you got to add... Uh, you can't go proprietary with, with memory. But Sony will. And then the price. So... Price is uh, it's gonna cost like what do you think it's gonna cost? Oh man, I don't know. Like, will if, it be the same price as a Switch Two? Will it be four hundred dollars for a dedicated if a, handheld? If, if a Switch Two is four hundred dollars, then if you're gonna advertise something that plays PS4 and PS PS5 games, yeah, four fifty. And I and I still think that's too much. So, with the let's say the so the Switch I still Two, think that's too much. I think it's it's too much because the Switch Two offers the ability for it to be a hybrid. Well, we don't know that yet. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's say let's say they stick to the format. You're you're absolutely yeah. right. But let's say they stick to the format of it being a hybrid. Um, let's talk about the Switch as it is now, right? Which is still three hundred bucks. Yeah. And they haven't lowered the price because that's Nintendo. They, Nintendo, if they're losing in the in the console space, they'll lower the price. But if they're dominating, same with Sony. Freaking good luck. Same with Sony. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they're but dominating Sony, but right Sony, now. But Sony, but Sony might give you a revision for a hundred bucks cheaper. They might do the the PlayStation Five Slim and keep it the same price, and then give you a Pro for a more expensive price. Well, they just dropped a a Slim version for the same price, and you get less. You, you get you less get memory less. if you get... But now it's like if you get like the... I guess we got to call it the PS5 Fat, right? Like they did with the PS3. The PS5 Fat, the launch systems. Yeah. Um. Those are actually giving you more for the same buck. Bang for your buck. Yeah, so... But they... But, anyway. But they're winning, though. They they're, are winning. They're, they're they are winning. winning. So it's, it's not like Xbox at this point or the Wii U <clears throat> or the, the Wii at the... Let's talk about the Wii at the very end of its console cycle when the when the PS4 came out, they came out with like the Wii that was like without Wi-Fi. Yeah. That only played Wii discs and had no GameCube ports. Do you remember that? It was red. I, I don't remember, but I don't think that's Sony. I think Sony's at a But they do that too, man. I think Sony is at a crossroads. I think Sony wanna be Apple right now. So this, uh, once I, I think show Sony you the, wants to be the Apple of gaming. I think both Nintendo and Sony do. Yeah. For sure. Do you remember this console? No, I remember the Wii console. Yeah, I remember this, that Wii this version of the Wii. I, I remember that. Yeah, so this version of the Wii has no GameCube ports, no SD card slot, it's just no Wi Fi. It's yeah. like, yo, you all you could play is Wii games. So I think that Sony, they but all systems do that except for Xbox, really. I know Xbox has come out with the Slim and the Pro systems and all that, but they don't ever they take would just away stop the Red Ring of Death. <laughs> they sure did. I went through like, I I can't remember the exact number. Let's say ten. And I'm drunk, but yeah, um, the PS Vita two. Here's my take on that. Sony doesn't learn their lesson. They want to join a market. They look at it every five or six years and they go, Oh, Nintendo has the DS, the Game Boy market. We can take a little piece of that pie. And they did with the PSP. The PSP sold 70 million systems. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's a lot of systems. Before them, Sega had the Game Gear. The Game Gear sold very well. It really I did. Had I had one. And the Game Gear was basically a, a oh, master goodness. system. And there were some Genesis ports and things like that. But Nintendo has always been like 80 to 90% of the handheld market. 
But here's the thing that Sony hasn't learned. They're looking at the handheld market now. They might consider the Switch a handheld, and that's fair. It is a hybrid console. But they're also looking at things like the Steam Deck, and they're also looking at like the ROG Ally, yeah, which ROG are Ally. That's portable. That's Lenovo, right? Yeah, which which is taking off. Yeah. So these are portable P- mini PCs. They're mini PCs that can run games at 1080p, 30 or 60 frames per second, and you can use this the Steam Store. It's Cause, tempting. Yeah, because because are Sony, it's tempting. They look at that market and they go, "Holy crap! Steam and ROG." have lenovo have carved a niche for people who are willing to pay a premium price in the portable pc market and then nintendo of course as always has always dominated the handheld market since 1989 with the game boy yeah so 89 through 20 what are we 2024 now but to, but to only just play your playstation games on it so this is where Sony kind of yeah. So this is where you and I are kind of aligning. If this is supposed to be a PlayStation Six family of of a system, we I don't think the first of all this thing is supposed to come out in two years. Yeah, so I of, don't see that. Yeah, I don't see it either. So the next portion of the rumor was that it's a PS Six family of games. I also don't see the PlayStation 6 coming out in the next two years. I do. Two years? I So 2026? Two to, two, to three years, two to three years. I think it's going to be a new Xbox console and it's going to be a new uh, PlayStation console. My, my opinion is we're going to see a PS5 Pro in the next two years. And so Sony and Microsoft are both... I think they're skipping the Pro. I think, I think not. I think we're going to get PS6... Uh, but, wait, that's fine. I think we're going to get a PS5 Pro. You don't think so. Um, I think that Sony and Microsoft both want to make these these system cycles a decade instead of five years. They want to make it a decade? Yeah. I think they want to extend, even though PC will be moving along at exponential rates, I think that console gaming is so cemented in our gaming culture that it doesn't matter where PC goes. And Microsoft and Sony want 10 years. Well, first of all, let, let me just be clear. Microsoft is going to move away from... They're going to move away from hardware in the next I decade. Think, so my opinion on that, I think they both realize that PC is a good hub to sell your games on now. Oh, yeah, so for sure. I think that for sure. Now, With Steam? Yeah, absolutely. I think they both realize like, that is another market. Yep. Um, I think, so three years from now, yep. they could drop a PlayStation 6. Three? It, I, I think maybe three I years, think, for sure. I think they could drop a PlayStation 6, and yep. Yep. the specs could be more comparable to a PC for the developers to make games on. And I also think within three years, they'll drop a PlayStation Hub for PC, where you could log in and do 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 and buy... You play Spider Man three or four on. Mm. Um, I I think I think Xbox taught us a lot, and it's about long term. Yeah, for and sure. it's all about something with gaming. I believe is, in my opinion, this is out of nowhere. This is just be because I'm drunk, but oh, I'm, 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 I, I'm I feel like right I'm I feel like gaming in a way is dying. And oh, I think really? They, I don't think so. I, don't I think, think so. I think all the big three companies know it. You got Nintendo jumping into... But why would you say it's dying? You got Nintendo jumping into uh, theme parks and movies. PlayStation has been selling a lot of their franchises to the, the streaming guys, the entertainment. And, and Xbox with and the, Xbox Halo, going, the Halo series. Yeah, but Xbox is going, uh, you know, the Game Pass, and they want to, like, all the, all, of that, all the... I don't of, think gaming, I think gaming is at its height. I don't see it dying I think yet. they, I think it's, all right, so, I don't think it's dying. Let me, let me, I, I'll, I'll take that back. I think it's plateauing right now. And That's they're, fair, that's fair. And they're, they're making moves right now. Okay. So... 
With they're, ex- they're, they're, they're looking for other venues to expand. That's for sure. Yeah. So, like, when we hear about who Microsoft had laid off, it was all gaming companies. But none of those people were from King. The mobile the mobile, the mobile version. The mobile version. We were talking about mobile games recently with Call of Duty Mobile. It's, yes. Yeah. So, the gaming division, um, their physical CD maker division, all that. Physical, but gone. not, but not, but not the the mobile version. That's true. And then you got PlayStation. What they had? They 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 what? Gran Turismo was the movie. Um, the That's Last awesome. of Us is a TV series. TV series. Twisted Metal is a TV series. Um, but they're trying. They, yeah. So it's like. But we've been trying since the 80s with video games and the movies. Yeah, but so in my opinion, I feel like they're all trying to. Expand. Expand and keep their. They're yeah. trying to gather up all the money and like, yo, yeah, let's, you're let's right. not you're make right. it go crazy. But with all of that, we want to kind of just talk about the Vita 2, right? I think that at the end of the day, Sony hasn't learned their lesson. And we're going to just focus on Sony and a PS Vita yeah, 2. Yeah, I think they learned their lesson. I don't think they have. Because Sony looks at the market every couple of years and goes, we want a piece of that pie. And they don't understand that. It's not necessarily that they're not doing it. It's not necessarily that they're not put. They, in my opinion, they think that if they pull, they pull out a Sony product with the PlayStation brand name on it, that that gamers are gonna flock to it, and they're so, wrong. And, so, I, and I'll give you some examples. I'll give you some examples. So, when I used to work at Radio Shack years ago, and that's dating myself, but when I used to work at Radio Shack years ago, there used to be a Sony cell phone, and it was a PlayStation branded cell phone. And you were supposed to be able to play PlayStation branded games on it, and guess what? It was trying to compete with what um, what the N Gauge was, what what Nokia yeah. was doing. That flopped. The PlayStation cell phone was a was a flop. The PSP came out. PSP was focused on hey, better horsepower, PlayStation Two graphics. There's no way this thing is supposed to lose to the Nintendo DS. That was Nintendo sixty four graphics. And it wasn't about that. So, even though they sold a well, a, a good amount of, of consoles, the Nintendo DS went out to become the second best-selling system of all time. Yeah. Only You're second right. to the PS2. You're right. Then we look at the 3DS, and they said, "I right, we had good success with the PSP. We're going we're gonna to now launch the PlayStation Vita. And there's no way it's going to lose to a system that's going to produce... GameCube graphics when we're making a game that we're a system that makes PS3 graphics yeah. and you can remote stream you can do all this stuff yeah. all the way through PS4 we're talking about 2019 was only five years ago yeah so Sony is now looking at the portable PC market and they're seeing the success that the switch had yeah. and they're saying we can do it again so I don't think they're looking at it like we could do it again. Um, I believe that Sony is probably looking at things like, should we jump in? If we jump in, all right. So now... They've been jumping in. They 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 stayed clear for about 10 years. No, they haven't. Because 2019 was only five years ago. And that's when they stopped supporting the PlayStation Vita. And... The PSP, the PS Portal, came out last year. I think they learned from their mistakes, and if they're gonna do it again, I think that if, if they would do it again, they gotta they gotta tie in some type of non proprietary memory card to make it work, right? To to get the masses, but to tie it all on just PlayStation, I think they'd do something. I think they'll do something different, yo. I think I, so. They would here's, have to do here's how different. I would make it succeed. So when Nintendo had a DS, and when Nintendo had 3DS, and when Nintendo had Game Boy and Game Boy Advance, they always had separate. 
dedicated teams that would only be able to work on games for that platform. That means, and they switched that during the Switch, by the way. Ironic, because of the name of the Switch. But they went from having dedicated teams to only work on 3DS to moving all of that talent to only work on Switch games. So they no longer have two divisions. Sony would have, would have to dedicate a first party team that only makes Vita 2 games. That way, here's a game that only comes out. There's You have to have a reason to own this system that only has this game. It's, it's an ex- exclusive. I can't just... Because if it's just going to be a streaming device for my PS6, you know in, in three years or two years or whenever the hell this thing comes out, your phone is going to be able to do that. Um, potentially your PS Portal, which is already a Wi-Fi only device, can do that. Your PS Vita 2 has to have exclusive games that makes me want to pay an extra 500 bucks and say, I'm going to take this PlayStation Vita 2 in my pocket. And I want to take it with me. And I don't yeah. know if Sony's willing to do that. They've never been able to do that. So, but, and a part of me, I mean, I'm not a, like, I, I like Sony. Yeah, But I I'm not too. like a They're Sony fine. fanboy, but like, a part of me feels like, I I, I don't think they're going to do it. No, they're not going to do I, that. I feel like it's, the market is already saturated. They learned from what you mentioned, the DS. I mean, the if they make the PS Vita 2 Steam... And you got the, uh, <laughs> like, maybe, all right, I could I could understand if they got a PC app launch, and the PC app is doing good. And it launches and now, Steam, for example. And, yeah, and now they got a handheld. Yeah, it's a portable PC. So you could you could do both. You could play your PlayStation, and you could do... It's a Vita, could, it's a could, Vita Raw Galli. I, I could see that. That could work. But if it's just PlayStation, no, I don't, I don't see it. If it's for Japan only, maybe, maybe, maybe. yeah, it maybe. may work. Yeah, yeah, for Japan only, I can see it happening. But from what we hear from these from these rumors or leaks, yeah, it's not been greenlit. Yeah, it's supposed to be worldwide, they're, they're, but it's not they're, greenlit they're, yet. No, they said Japan only. Well, they said Japan only if it's part of the PS6 family. Okay. But if it's PS4, PS5, then it's worldwide. So, with that said, if, if it's something that they're they're toying with, like I I I I believe that they're toying with it, and they probably made some stuff, and they probably trying it out. I believe that. But if it's greenlit right now, or could potentially be greenlit in two years, yeah. I think they I think they waiting on the market. I mean, it could be we we don't know. Obviously, this is all rumors yeah. and speculation. I think that a Sony dedicated handheld is a bad move on Sony's end. I think they're going to, they'll, they'll let's say they sell 12, 12 to twenty million. I think that that's very possible. Um, which is I'm not even thinking about sales. If they, but if, that's what they got. They got to think about. If you could play, if you could, if if, if it was a potential Steam Deck. Which I which I doubt, which I doubt. If if they made something that was the go head to head with Steam Deck, right? Right. And it's like we want the older adult gaming market, and it plays everything that the Steam Deck could play or compatible for Steam Deck. Yeah. But you get access to the the PlayStation library off rip. Or, that may or work. Games that you own at the very least. Oh, that yeah, that may work. But Man, if it's just, just you have a lot just, of faith in them. Sony has not I'm shown not, it's, any it's, any of that in the last decade. Man, they just don't do that. You saying I got faith? I don't. It's not about faith. It would be I don't, nice. I don't, I don't think that they're going to. Yeah, but make that's a PS We got to go by what the league is for I now. I don't think they're and gonna, the Vita two. It so, sounds like a. It sounds like anything but that. Listen, I'm on record for saying that I don't think there's going to be a PS Vita two. I think they're. I think Sony hasn't learned their lesson. I think they might come out with another one, 
Um, Sony definitely 1,000% want to take over the market Nintendo has. Um, the, the problem they have is they, they fail to realize a couple of key parts. Is that one, Steam Deck and ROG Ally have emerged as portable PCs. But that's a different market. They're trying to be something in between the Switch and that. And then they it's felt not work. And yeah, and then they failed to realize what Nintendo has, which is their first party stuff. So, but but PlayStation. So I was like, now I'm back on it. PlayStation has did. Uh, they they have <laughs> they have upgraded and they did work on their first party stuff. Though. Yeah, but it's not the same market. It's it's not. It's but not like, Mario. It's not, it's not Sonic. It's, so it's in not... my opinion, it's 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 not enough. Yeah. So they would have to. Say, forget the Switch, forget Nintendo. Yeah, we want to go after the Steam Deck, ROG Ally crowd, and create something for them. And if they create something for that <laughs> for for that crowd, and and also drop a PlayStation app that's compatible <coughs> on PC on Steam and blah blah blah. Or like, but will uh-huh. they allow Steam Deck on their system? I doubt it. Well. If Microsoft has told us anything that this gaming world is changing, and I would not be surprised if they were to do that, I think that's in their best interest. Is there be- and sure, they, and they wouldn't. It, but right now, I don't think there's going to be a, a, a Vita two. And if it, if there is a Vita two outside of Japan that works with the PlayStation Six, allows you to play PS Four, PS Five games. It, <coughs> I think it would fail unless they continue delivering and trying to be like Apple and create like a, a Apple spear, you know, but yeah, <coughs> so that's my thoughts. What's your thoughts? You leave it in the comments down below. Hit that like, let's hit the subscribe button. I got nothing but time. I will argue you in the comments. Listen, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. We've said our piece. We don't know whether or not Sony is going to go this route. Again, this is rumors and speculation, so it could be completely off bait. So, with that said, right? Thank you guys for joining oh, us this week. Excuse me. Thank you, guys. We love you. And please like and subscribe. Like, subscribe. Join us here at Chris's fell on the floor uh star flag media join us like subscribe and thank you for joining us as always and if you heard that that was chris have a good one thanks for joining us have a good one bye-bye